Former Super Eagles captain Austin Okocha has been an ever-present figure at the AFCON 2023, motivating and inspiring the players to victory. Arise Sports correspondent Aaron Akirijala sits with the legend live from Abidjan. All right, I want to say thank you very much, Timmy Chokwe. And like you've just said in the introduction, I'm with greatness personified because um, while I was just seated here waiting for this particular slot to come in, I was just, something was just running through my mind. A lot of people always say, Dana the Bull, a teammate of Austin Jojo Kocha, in, when he was running commentary for the Nigerian game, kept on mentioning that at the moment, despite the man retiring in 2006, his role in the national team has not been replicated. Those shoes have never been filled. I mean, the presence of greatness, literally, talking about no other. They say he was so good, they named him twice. Austin J.J. Okocha, thank you very much for joining us here on Arise News. Thank you for having me. And so, J.J. Okocha, um, I want to, let's start it off from that particular point. When you hear people say that, that what you brought to the national team has never been has never been replicated and no one has been able to match that level of artistry how do you feel well i feel great about it you know um i feel um job well done you know because um i've always believed that whatever your profession is you know you should be committed you should give you your best shot and if you get appreciated you know, after that, then uh, it means that you've done something good. And I cherish every time that people, you know, appreciate the work that I've put in, even though I've left the game so many years ago, mm. you know, but yeah, it's, um, it's a great thing to know. Because um, arguably you're one of the most recognized football players, like you said, you, you actually retired from the national team in 2006, and you look at that years down the line. When FIFA are actually trying to get a uh, put together an event for the legends, the first name that actually pops up, especially from Africa, is Austin Jeju Okocha. And some will even look at it and say, oh, how many medals did he win? But yet, he's this popular, this recognized. Does he ever, do you ever come to terms with all of this? Well, yes. I mean, um, I think the older I get, the more I accept. Um, my faith, you know, and, and understand that some things are not meant to be, you know, but the most important thing for me is that I won hearts when I was playing, you know, and for me that's priceless. Um, I, I, I should have maybe won more trophies, you know, but um, like I said, everybody's um, uh, destiny is different, you know, and, and mine maybe was not meant to to, to, I was not meant to win trophies, but at least I still gain recognition. Uh, point of correction, <laughs> you did win trophies because USA 94 is something close to Nigerian's heart. Yeah. And certainly you were there in USA 94. So you're one of the select few, of, select few Nigerians or select few Super Eagles players that has both won gold, silver, and bronze at the Nations Cup. Yeah, between 2002 and 2006, it was called the Golden Bronze. It was the, it, it was, it was the year of the Golden Bronze, literally. Yeah. Looking back and saying, and let's try to now bring it to this Nations Cup. What's the feeling like winning gold? What's the feeling like winning bronze? What's the feeling like winning silver? Well, I think um, I will start um, with winning bronze because that's the most difficult game to play in a tournament like this you know after losing in semi-finals to pick yourselves up and and to say okay at least let's not go home empty-handed mm. and it happened to me three times you know uh, and then Siva was um, um, I would say a very bad memory for me because it happened at home mm. and the way it happened you know um, I, I thought we could have maybe won it at home, you know, but it's not given, you have to end it. True. Uh, and we felt a bit robbed also. Yes, yes, we the did. The way it happened, you know, yes, and, we did. Uh, I wish we had VAR. <laughs> <then, you know. laughs> True. But, but again, um, 
Yeah, gold medal is the ultimate, you know, and, and I won it um, on my first try. So I thought it was easy. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't know that it, <laughs> it's so difficult, you know, to win uh, gold in African Nations Cup. But again, that's the experience that I'm trying to pass on to this generation, you know, to let them understand that if you have the opportunity, make sure you, you grab it. Um, so I, I was speaking with Amadjo Pinnick, a few of us journalists were speaking to Amadjo Pinnick, just on a lighter note, and he made, some, he made mention of something. He said, please, you people should say a mighty thank you to JJ Okocha, because what he's bringing to this tournament in terms of inspiration, in terms of motivation for these boys, is relentless, is on marching. It might not be sung to the high heavens, but we see it and we know the impact it has had. Talk to us about the role you're playing because you're not in the forefront. You're just here to support and at the same time lend that experienced voice to a dressing room that is young. Well, I'm, I'm here as CAF ambassador. I'm not even here with the national team, you know, but after I watched our first game, um, I had the feeling that they needed help, you know. And um, as a patriotic Nigerian, I can't be here and, and notice something and not get involved, you mm. know. So um, when you say notice something now, that means you're talking about tactics? I'm talking about the team. No, not ta tactically, I'm not, it's not part of my mm. deal. It's not my thing. I'm not a coach, okay. you know. But I could see in terms of leadership, oh. in, term, in terms of motivation, in mm. terms of maybe letting the players understand what it means to mm. play for your nation, what it means to play in the African Nations Cup, because some of these players are not familiar with our route. You mm. know, some True. of them grew True. up in Europe, you know, so they needed somebody that have been there, that have done it, you know, to, to remind them that this is a different competition, this is a different ball game uh, than what they are used to in Europe, you know. So I saw the need to go and talk to them privately, you know, and um, it worked. And, and, and then um, after the second game, um, they were like, oh, please come back again, you know. So I saw that there's a need for me to be there with them. There's a need for me to assist the team. And, and thankfully, it's working. Now, let me ask you a question. You've seen this, you've seen this thing. Has this team, the tactics, the players, the execution, the ability, has it surprised you? Because some are saying that probably in the last 15 years we've not had boys with collective mindsets like this going for one purpose, unified under one umbrella. What have you seen with this team that probably stands out from the rest of the Super Eagles? Because trust me, you've been with the best and you've been with the worst. Talk to me about this. Well, I think um, um, they've understood that um, they have to play to their strength. Unfortunately, we don't have too many superstars in the team. Mm. They are stars in their own right, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, but um, we are still remembered because they've not surpassed True. our achievement or True. surpassed our talents. So um, we try to get them to play to their strength. And more than tactics is to play from your heart, you know, be committed, know that the minimum that you, that you can do is to make sure that you push sweat in that national team color, you know, and, and to stay as disciplined as you can. You know, the first objective is not to concede. If you don't concede, you stand the chance of winning. Has that surprised you in this particular competition? Because no, coming no. to the competition, they said, let's forget about the fact that going forward, we are a joy to watch. But that hasn't even played out. Our defensive abilities are stronger suited to this nation's cup. Exactly, because um, going forward, it's normally our strength. Mm. We've always had doubts, you know, when it comes to our defense and how we defend and our players' mindset. True. You know, are, are they willing to go back and do the daily job? You know, because it's always easy to go when, when you have the ball to go forward to enjoy the good part of 
a football match, you know. So this is what this team have transformed, and in a very in a very short period, you know, which is why we are still in this tournament, which is why we stand a chance of going all the way. All right, going all the way. So, Kali, for me, we have four teams left: Nigeria, the host. Ivory Coast. Do you think they've been just a statement? Do you think they've been lucky, Ivory Coast? Well, sometimes you need you need luck. You need to you need to be pinched, you know, to understand that it's not given. You know, yes, we we, we can say that they are lucky to still be in this tournament, but when they've been given second chance, you know, taking it, true. They, Taking it, you yes. know, and sometimes that's what you need in football. So Congo DR, and of course, a family open that you know about, South Africa. So call it for me, which teams will be playing in the finals? <laughs> well, I, I think um, it's open, but of course, as a core Nigerian fan, of course, um, I expect our team to, to grab the opportunity and, and make it to the final and give themselves the chance to win it. You know, but it's one step at a time. We have South Africa to play next. Uh, we just have to end the right to win a football match. It doesn't matter how now. You just have to win to give yourself. Now let's the, the let's play a futuristic game. If the Super Eagles were to win the tournament and were to put all four medals on the table, the 1980, the 1994, the 2013, and by God's grace. On Sunday, mm -hmm. the 2023 AFCON, or mm -hmm. here in 2024, and they say pick one of the victories that you feel was huge and massive. Which of these ones you pick? I'll pick this current one. Wow! Because um, it will come in a time that the whole nation is struggling. Mm. It will come in a time that people did not expect it to happen. Mm. And um, it will come in a time that I think some of us have understand that leadership is not about us. Mm. It's about building people around us. True. It's, a, around, it's about building greatness, you know, building, helping people to achieve their dreams. And that's what I'm doing here. You know, so that will give me more joy, you know, that when I was an actor myself. Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I will feel honored, you know, by helping other people to achieve their dreams. I will say this on behalf of myself, the entire 200, over 200 million Nigerians, <laughs> I want to say a huge thank you to you for what you are doing and what you will continue to do for those boys as we gone for glory come Sunday. But first of all, it is Nigeria against um, South Africa on Wednesday. We hope to have another discussion, but this time around, we'll be, we'll be having ribbons and also medals on our neck, and we'll be holding that trophy and saying, we won AFCON 2023. Austin Jeju thank you very much. A huge pleasure and enjoy the rest of the tournament. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, you actually listen to the legend himself speak about the role he's actually playing at the moment, taking out time to inspire the next generation. It, can, it doesn't get better than that. Uh, this is where I just get to drop the anchor for now. I must say that we are still prepping for that particular game. It is Nigeria against South Africa, the Super Eagles against the Bafana Bafana on Wednesday in Boakai. Let's see what happens. Thank you.